What's going on, guys? Today's 12-Minute Talk, we're going to talk about something that uh, was brought on by, yet again, uh, more false bullshit over on YouTube. Now, speaking of YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, please. <laughs> if you're listening on platforms, give us a review if, if it's available on whatever platform you're listening on. Rate us if it's available. All that stuff helps a lot. And especially nowadays that YouTube has once again updated our algorithm because of some bullshit. But help us out. We appreciate it greatly. But let's move on to today's topic. They come up from watching. I try to I try to keep up with certain content over on YouTube. There's so much nowadays it's almost impossible. And it, it gives me ideas. And then I kind of base that off of live streams, the questions that get asked, and messages people send and everything else. Something that come up lately is like, what's more important? Uh, cartridge overall length or... Based to Ojive. So let's put 12 minutes on the clock here if I could do it without messing it up. And we're off and running. So, number one, what is cartridge overall length or coal for short? C O A L. Cartridge overall length is literally just as simple as it's the overall length of the cartridge. What is BTO? Base to OJAV. Now, people often ask, like, which one's more important? Well, they both are. <laughs> it's really that simple. So, cartridge overall length is important most of the time because if it's too long, it won't fit in the magazine. It's really that simple. Like, there's, there's uh, most platforms nowadays will feed in. Even if it's an internal magazine, like there's no Dropbox magazine, whether it be an AR-15 or a bolt action, there's there's even going to be internal dimensions. Now, all this is important because leading up to this, further down the road, there's going to be even more podcasts that kind of get into this arena. But let's let's take take care of the easy one. If your cartridge overall length is too long for your magazine, then that's bad. <laughs> you know, it's not going to fit. So, yes, that's important. But from a reloading standpoint, you don't need to get hyper fixed on the cartridge overall length because in the manufacturing process of projectiles, nine times out of ten, that number, if you're measuring with your calipers, that number is going to fluctuate because in the bullet, the actual projectile, the bullet manufacturing process, the way most of them are made, they can't control that little number uh, to a T. The better measurement when reloading as it pertains to the interaction between uh, the chamber to the lens, and if you don't know what all that stuff is, like, Go go do your research, but the base to O job is more important than the overall length. Now, base to O job, meaning you're going to need a certain set of tools. Horny makes them. I believe they call it the comparator set. Uh, I don't remember the exact name. Basically, what it does is it allows you to use your calipers to measure on a certain point of the bullet, the O job, the same point of the bullet on the OJAV every single time. That measurement is going to be way more accurate than overall length as it pertains to sitting depth. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make... This is kind of a hard, hard one to do, and I may I may redo a video, actual video for the channel on this with a whiteboard uh, so I can really lay this out. But there's, there's so much information out there on this very specific subject but the, this question comes up quite often. What's more important, overall length, cartridge overall length, or base to OJAV? The overall length, like I said, is most important, especially if you're sitting a high BC long projectile and you need to stay within magazine capacity. Each magazine is going to have a an overall length that you cannot go over or else it won't fit the magazine. And especially like if you're if you're loading like a projectile that's again high BC heavy per caliber, and you 
you can't go over mag length. That's very important. But from a reloading standpoint, as I said, measuring base uh, cartridge overall length, meaning base to tip, isn't always going to yield you. Like, don't chase that number. That's the worst thing you could do. The best thing you could do is set up your dies based off the cartridge overall length. Because there's going to be a length you need to stay within. And then once it's confirmed that it's seating base uh, cartridge overall length, base the tip the same every time, then take your tools, whether you have another set of calipers or whatever the case would be, with your base to OJIV measuring device, whatever that may be, and measure every one that way to see how consistently your bullets are seating. Again, like if you go look into some of these bullet manufacturers, they will 100% have information out out there about this. Like it, it, before, like before you even go down this road, like you you need to know the the bare essentials of how like what the terms are of a projectile, a bullet. Uh, simply put, starting at the base of the bullet, like say we're holding a projectile right here. I should have grabbed a 30 cal one, like something big. There's the base. It's really simple. It's the fatter end of the two. <laughs> then you'll have some sort of tail. You know, not, not always like a boat tail projectile. That's the tail, the portion that usually swoops back to the base. And then you have your bearing surface. That's going to be the flat surface. And then you have the ogive, which that's where it turns to go towards the tip. The tip is called the meat plant. Now, there's tons of different kinds of bullets out there nowadays. There's flat base, boat tail, hollow point, uh, tipped boat tail. Like, but like once you know these specific terms, you're gonna you're gonna know enough to carry on. Like, and there's tons of information out there on this very specific topic. There's different kinds of ogive, secant, hybrid, uh the name of the other ones escaping me, but go look up information on that. If you want to know uh tagnet, ta uh, tang, tagnet, I don't even know how to pronounce that word. You know what I'm saying? Secant hybrid tangent, tangent, maybe, I don't know. If you want to know like the difference between those and, uh, you know, if you're not reloading, it really isn't important, I guess. Really? Not really anyways, but, Go look it up. Like, but basically, if you want to, if you're reloading and you want to know the most accurate way to measure to ensure you're sending the projectile the same every time, based to OJIVE or BOT or BTO, I'm, I'm sorry, is the best way to measure because that measurement is going to be more accurate. And again, throughout the bullet manufacturing process, the, the overall length of the projectile itself will fluctuate because the tip, the way they form the projectiles, the meat plant, which is the tip of the bullet, the pointy end. <laughs> but typically speaking, you can just about guarantee if you measure base to ogive with tools that are available out there for it, just look it up on Google, that's going to give you a much more accurate measurement. Now, where this measurement also matters the most is for... When you're loading ammo, you have your overall length that you need to work within because of magazine capacity. Your base to ogive is going to be more important if you're trying to stay so far off the lands of the barrel. Again, this is pretty hard to really discuss on a podcast without some sort of picture to show you like the, the relationship, but... Back in the old days, everybody just thought, and there, there's still plenty of people out there, and, and, you know, the, certain burger projectiles do tend to like being jammed into lands, but that's that's kind of a thing in the past. And I, I think it had to do just because, like, back in the old days, uh, chamber specs were way more loose than they are with modern cartridges, meaning they had a lot more uh, tolerances than modern stuff. And... You you probably had to jam the lands to get a more accurate handoff to the lands, if that makes sense whatsoever. Nowadays, it's not it's not as much of a deal. You can you can get off the lands, and that, in fact, especially if you're running suppress, I would recommend it. Get off the land some. It doesn't. It's it's not it's not a deal breaker. 
But that base to ogive, once you've tested and figure out what your maximum overall length is jamming the lens, that base to ogive is going to tell you how far you are off of the lens based off of that particular projectile if you have all the correct tools to measure this. But maybe that's a full podcast subject, like getting really deep diving that specific subject. Uh, but that's, you know, that's pretty much it. Hopefully I didn't confuse people. And, I, I, you know, wrap this up, put a bow on it. Cartridge overall length, it's more important as it pertains to fitting inside of a magazine or coal for short. Cartridge overall length. Based the ogive is the better way to measure from a reloading standpoint. It's a more accurate measurement. I, almost every person I talk to or coach through getting into reloading, when they first start seeing bullets, and you know, some bullets are better than others. Uh, the, like Burger has me plant reduction stuff, and you know, some projectiles don't have a lot of fluctuation on the tip or the me plant, if you will. But I, I've I've gone through this a lot with a lot of people where they're measuring their overall length and they have like, you know, a good set of calipers that read way on past where they probably should. And that number's fluctuating and they're literally just sitting there messing with their dies. First thing, do you have the tools? Do you have the, uh, I think it's called a horny comparator set. Basically, it's this little old insert that goes on your calipers that allows you to measure based ogive. Do you have that? Well, no. Get it. Get Before you keep chasing this number around, get that. And then measure it base ogive. That number, if you're if your press set up right and you're going to the end of your stroke every single time, it's more than likely it's seating a bullet the same every time. You're just chasing that number that fluctuates due to the fact that that's how they're manufactured. So again, BTO base to ogive. That's the important measurement as it pertains to consistency in your bullet seating. Because there's nothing most manufacturers can do about the little bit of tolerances in the tip or the meat plant. Cartridge overall length, it does matter, but it matters most about uh, magazine capacities, well, in my opinion anyways. But at the end of the day, which one matters the most? Well, they both both matter the most. <laughs> That's pretty much it for this one. Again, burger... And uh, Applied Ballistics do a really good job talking about these specific subjects. And Horny has a podcast. They talk about stuff like this. I'm sure they've talked about it in the past. There's videos out there explaining this with uh, pictures and you know stuff like that. But I, I would I would recommend getting on Burger or Applied Ballistics. And they, they get in depth on this particular subject. I know for a fact. I've seen it before. If you want some uh, pictures to go along with it, maybe to help you ex understand a little bit better. That's pretty much it for this one. Be sure and go check out allyammunitions.com or if you're in Midland, go by Ally Outdoors and we'll see you guys next time.